Hi guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. It's actually Wednesday today, around lunchtime. Um, I haven't really done much this week besides uni work, so I've just not really felt the need to update because I've not even started reading a book. I feel like this week isn't going to include much reading, but I thought I'd start the vlog at last. <laughs> and this morning I haven't yet started uni work. I will be doing some soon because I have essays to write. But I'm actually going to be working from home today, which I haven't done in quite a while because I do find it harder to work at home. But I do have quite a few things I need to do alongside uni work. So I need to do my clothes washing, I need to upload a video which takes hours. And I don't really want to try and do it at university on their Wi-Fi because I feel like that might take even longer and it might not even work. So I'd rather just stay at home, have that running in the background while I write my essay. I just have lots of little jobs that I need to do today. Hopefully I'm going to tidy my bedroom because it's such a mess and it is stressing me out. But if I do that, it will be this evening because I also want to wrap some presents this evening. So there's a hell of a lot of things that I want to try and cram into today. I've already been out Christmas shopping, doing some last little bits. My camera cut out for a second there, so apologies if the lighting has changed or anything, which it looks like it has quite dramatically. But yes, the main reason why I'm starting this vlog now is because I have some book mail. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do an unbox it. <laughs> Are you guys bored of these yet? Because I'm certainly not, but um, in every vlog I have some kind of unboxing. I should probably save these for Christmas, but I'm too impatient for that, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> Oh my god! I only just put these on! When did this happen? So there's two books in here, again. <laughs> and the note for these ones are quite short. One of them just says, enjoy your gift, and the other one says, Merry Christmas, lovely lady, have a fantastic one, from Simone. So I presume this is Simone from me, Simone and I. I am going to message her. I apologise if it's not, but that's the Simone that I think of. But... Simone very kindly got me. <laughs> the Obelisk Gate and the Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison. So in last week's vlog I got The Fifth Season from Brit and was it in last week's vlog? I don't know, in a vlog recently that happened. These are books two and three in that series and now I have the full set. That's so exciting. So I can now binge read the series which is brilliant because as I've said in many videos recently, I, I'm i not good at continuous series, but every so often I do binge read them. Stop eating my tinsel. It's so exciting to have a full set now. I've been wanting this series for so long and then it just happened and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so surprised. I can't really read the blurbs off these ones or anything because it is, as I said, the sequels in a series and I don't want to spoil myself for the first but hopefully in January maybe I am going to start the series and get to these ones soon. Ooh. Oh, it's so satisfying. Have the full set. Thank you so much, Simone. This is so appreciated. I can't believe you did this. Thank you. <laughs> At this point I've just kind of got books stacked on my shelves because I have my bookcases as they normally are but then I've just started putting books on top because I feel like there's no point rearranging my bookshelves until it's gone past Christmas. Because I do organise my books by genre so every time I get like a new fantasy book I have to kind of fit it in where it fits so I currently just have books stacking up. And I'm going to rearrange my bookshelves at some point, probably on the evening of Christmas Day. So at some point in a vlog in a couple of weeks you will be seeing that. And would anybody be interested in a bookshelf tour in 2020? I did do one towards the start of this year so it would kind of make sense to do an updated one, especially because I've unhauled a lot of books and I've also obviously been holding a lot of books lately so... Let me know if you're interested in one of those and I shall see what I can do. But yes, I now need to go back to doing things. I don't really know what to do because I did try to do uni work a bit earlier. But I feel like I'm actually more productive in the evening. And also one of my deadlines has been pushed back, but I was kind of pushing myself to finish it as soon as possible so that I could hand it in and have it done before Christmas. But I think it would actually be better for myself if I only aim to do one of them before Christmas and then the other essay I can do in January because it's not due until January 9th. So it was actually Becca's idea for me to 
complete the essay that I've currently started and have that done by the 19th because that was the original deadline but it's been pushed back to January 10th. But I'm going to aim for the original deadline but then push the other one back until January so I'll still have a break over Christmas but it's just broken up a bit more so that I'm not quite as stressed out as I am now because I'm already working until about 2am. Just between doing uni work or making videos, as I said earlier I haven't yet started a book this week which to be fair I'm not feeling too bad about. I feel like I've hit 100 books for the year and I can take December a little bit more chill. Sometimes that's just what life is. <laughs> I've just got too much stuff going on to be able to dedicate to reading but I don't know I do still hope to start reading a book today. I think for now I'm actually going to fill in all my video stuff for today's video because I do have one going up today and then this evening I'll be working on my essay because as I said I do tend to be more productive in the evening and I have lots of little jobs to do today so I think I'm gonna swap my schedule around and see how that works because I feel like I'm not getting anywhere at the minute so something needs to change. <laughs> the look. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, it's a bit later now and I just thought I would... Whoa, I'm, I'm holding this really wobbly. And I, oh, this was a mess. <laughs> but I've just finished cleaning my room and I'm going to chill for the rest of the evening. I think I'm going to watch some booktube and then hopefully I'm going to start reading Illuminae by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman. I have actually read this before but it was quite a long time ago and I do want to continue the series but I can't remember what happened so I'm going to reread this. I know I said in my last vlog that I was going to read The Song Rising but I'm just, I'm in the mood to read Illuminae instead so that's what I'm gonna do. I did make a Twitter thread for the Magical Readathon with any updates but then I deleted it because I want to take part very casually in that I don't feel like I have to stick to it. So because I'd already tweeted saying, oh, I'm using the song rising for my next prompt, I felt like I had to delete the entire thing because I was like, I'm not taking part anymore. But then I realized because my prompt was to read a book with an orange cover, this fits into it anyway. So if I do manage to read this one, that's fine. Are you quite done, sir? You are the noisiest cat. Hey? But yes, so I will be starting Illumina tonight, but I feel like most of this might be read over the weekend because I'm going to Becca's house for the weekend, which I don't think I've mentioned anywhere yet, but that's happening. So I think most of Illumina will be read on the train because I know tomorrow evening I need to edit a video and then on Friday I will be going, so um... Uh. It's Thursday evening and don't have too much to update on because this vlog is turning into not a reading vlog but a book mail vlog. <laughs> ah. But before I get into that, I did start reading Illuminae last night. However, I only got 30 pages in and I was reading for like two hours but apparently I wasn't. I think it's because I've just had so much to do that I kind of just wanted an evening of sitting and staring. <laughs> Do you know when you just really do not want to do anything at all? That was last night. So I didn't end up reading anything really, but I have realised how much I don't remember about this. I don't think I actually explained to you what this is about. 
So I said this was a sci-fi book and it follows two people called Katie and Ezra who live on a small planet who has this kind of underground mining thing going on but there's another planet who also mines who sees them as a competition and they're at war because of this and so this rival planet at one point comes along and just starts like bombing the place. Everything's in chaos, people get evacuated on two ships and the two main characters end up on different ships. There's the Hypatia and the Alexander I think they're called. These two characters end up being separate onto the two different ships. However, later in the plot, one of the ships ends up with a deadly plague consuming it. They're all trying to figure out what's going on, they're trying to figure out if they can even survive because the chances of that right now are really quite minimal. As two main characters are trying to figure out the truth behind what's going on because everything's kind of secret and no one's really saying everything that there is. But one thing that makes it slightly awkward is the fact that on the day when all this started they had actually just broken up. So there's drama right from the offset because we do literally start with a planet being completely decimated and a breakup. So um, you are quite literally launched straight into all the action. I I didn't forget how scientific it was because obviously it's a sci-fi, but because of the multimedia format there are a lot of instances where it does kind of technical talk. However, it's also counteracted in a way because there's small comments, like this is presented as a case file of sorts and there are comments from whoever's put it together to kind of counteract the difficulty or explains things or even just make snarky comments. And that's another thing as well. I can already see the humour in this that I quite liked. But other than that, I've just realised how much I forgot because I read the back and it mentioned the whole Deadly Plague situation, which I just completely forgot about. Hopefully I will get more of this read today because I'm about to edit a video for tomorrow and then when that's exporting, uploading, processing, taking its sweet time to do everything, I'll be reading this. <laughs> But as I did say when I started this update, I do have more book mail. <laughs> what more can I say? This, every single time this happens, this blows my mind. <laughs> my Christmas book haul is going to be one to watch, guys. Like, this is just incredible and I cannot thank you enough. Ooh, it's wrapped. It's wrapped. <gasps> Ooh. So this one just says to Ashley, Merry Christmas from, in brackets, Confuzzled Bev. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Oh my goodness. Oh, and it says it on the gift tag as well. This is such a cool book pouch. It matches the book pouch so well. <laughs> oh my god. So this is The Diviners by Libba Bray, which I have been wanting to read for the longest time. And I feel like this has had such a revival lately. And it's just reminded me how much I've been wanting to read it for years. This is so funny because I was considering getting an audiobook for this to like read along with it. I was literally going to buy this in January so that I could have the audiobook and read it at the same time because it is quite a hefty book. This was such great timing. <laughs> oh my god I love this. So I'm just going to read out what it says on the back because as much as I've been wanting to read this for years, I would be really, really rubbish at trying to explain what it's about. So the back just says, Evie O'Neill has been exiled from her boring old hometown and shipped off to the bustling streets of New York City. And she is a... That... <laughs> okay. There's lots of dashes between the word, so I just kind of didn't process what that said. <laughs> And she is positively ecstatic. The only catch is that she has to live with her Uncle Will and his unhealthy obsession with the occult. Evie worries he'll discover her darkest secret, a supernatural power that has only brought her trouble so far. But when the police find a murdered girl branded with a cryptic symbol and Will is called to the scene, Evie realises she could help catch a killer. Catch a killer. <laughs> catch a killer. As she jumps headlong into a dance with a murderer, other stories unfold in the city that never sleeps. A young man named Memphis is caught between two worlds. A chorus girl named Theta is running from her past. A student named Jericho hides a shocking secret. And unknown to all, something dark and evil has awakened. Ooh, that sounds so mysterious. I can't remember which time period this is set in, but I feel like it's the same sort of time period as Fantastic Beasts. Like, if you look at the cover, is it the 1970s? A really bad at place in time periods but it sounds so good and I really cannot wait to dive into this at some point. As I said I will probably get an audiobook. I've heard that the audiobook for this is pretty good so if you have listened to the audiobook then let me know whether you would recommend it or not. But yes thank you so much Bev. It's really strange to own this now because I've literally had this on my want to read list for about three four years. So excited. Hopefully that is it for the book mail in this video because 
this video is literally just a haul at this point. As I said, I do intend to read more of Illumina tonight, so fingers crossed that happens because this cannot be called a reading vlog at this point. But I'm feeling quite chilled this evening because I'm currently not going to be doing any uni work until Monday because I'm going to Becca's for the weekend from tomorrow onwards and I've done today's lot so I'm feeling really chilled actually which is quite nice because it's been a very long time since that's been the case. <laughs> But yes, I'm going to go and edit a video, so I will pop in tomorrow probably with an actual reading update. <laughs> Hi guys, it is now Friday evening and I've invaded Becca's house. Look it's true, she brought a suitcase. I did. I love you now. We are going to do a kind of gift exchange thing because I did bring Christmas gifts already, so we're just going to swap them now. Um, I guess I'll be opening mine first. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll be opening mine first and Becca's gonna open hers in her vlog. As always, there will be links down in the description box to everything you need to know. But before we do that, I got 100 pages into Illuminae at last because it's taken me about two days to get 40 pages in. I forgot, been, um, that, I forgot that you were doing a book update and you said before that and I was like, oh, what is the surprise content? But it's like, it's books. That shouldn't be the surprise content in a vlog. Like, Who'd have thought? <laughs> Reading vlog. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair though, with how this week has gone, that would be pretty accurate. Like, so it's just been. I got book mail. I got more book mail. <laughs> <laughs> so, did get a hundred pages in. It's still very like a very technical talk. It's just kind of establishing all the technical problems that are happening. I will say that I've finally gotten used to the characters because besides the main two, who are Arcadia and Ezra. They're kind of having conversations with other people because it's through messages. They've all got nicknames or titles, like there's second lieutenant and sergeant and stuff, and I finally wrapped my head around who's who, so... That's why the audio was good, because they've all got different voices. Yeah. More of the emotional side of things has started getting involved as well, and like the drama besides the technical talk, so I think from here on in it's going to be a ride. But I was just saying to Becca as well that I'm shocked because if you've read this book then you'll know Aiden. <laughs> um, that's not a thing yet, really. I thought that was introduced a lot earlier on, so... I was surprised as well because um, I follow Jay Kristoff on Twitter, so before I read Illuminae, I knew who Aiden was. Well, I knew that he was an artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone makes, like, is always talking about Aiden. But mm -hmm. it's like, is it? It's over halfway, because it's the black bits. Yeah, so... Can, can you really tell? So all the darker sections are Aiden. I haven't really gotten to him yet, but that's like the main deal. So I'm kind of surprised that it's taken so long to, to kick in. But I think from here on in, it's about to be wild. I did rate this 4.5 stars when I first read it. It's going to be on my best books of the year. Is it? I loved Illuminate. I was reading that the day that I accidentally shaved part of my eyebrow off. I don't know if you remember that. I remember that! that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching your vlog and being like, you fool. <laughs> I was trying to dab plan my forehead and I just like took. And I, I, like, I remember your reaction to the ending as well. Oh no, it was just the end of my eyebrow. It was. My reaction to the ending of... It wasn't the end, I don't think. It was near the end, because it was near the end of the vlog and you were just like... Oh yeah, <laughs> I was painting my nails. So I love how I remember this vlog like so vividly. But yeah, it's same. I think it's because I was listening to it and reading it at the same time, yeah. so it sticks in my mind more. But I was shook mm -hmm. And hopefully I will be because I don't remember anything about this apparently, so um we'll see how it goes. But Oh, presents. Present. Right, what order do you want to do them in? Because um like do you want Do you do like the best one last? Is that how you open yeah. presents? Like when you get your presents, do you shake them and try and determine which is the best one and then leave it to no. last? Oh no, I do that. And then if um, I know I would like to do the best to last, but I don't tend to have the person with me when I open them. I don't know how to determine what's the best. See, I also do this thing like <laughs> if I know that somebody's bought me something specifically, I'll try and find it so that I open it first because I don't want to like build myself up to my last present and there'd be something I know I'm getting. But you don't know what any of these are. I don't. Okay, well... The, <laughs> this the is least... so much more difficult. I have numbered yours. <laughs> you can have them all, but um, that's the least exciting one. Okay. I'll probably open that first anyway, just because it's like by itself. Oh my god, there's another one. There's another one. Is that candle burning chunks? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Right, oh can we take a minute to appreciate my... This is... Wrapping, because I'm so impressed. 
it's all colour schemed and in an order and it's amazing. I and it was it. like, it was wrapped for what, two days and now it's going to be torn apart and it's so beautiful. I'm not going to get glitter in my donut. Oh, I'm gonna leave that to last. I'm excited. No, not that one first, that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm like the worst, I'm like, don't open your presents. Am I gonna get explanations to why things happen? I don't think you'll need them. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay, honey? <laughs> I told you you wouldn't need it. Nice. This is the, this is the thing. It says, are you okay, hun? <laughs> Which is, um... Somebody needed to ask me if I was okay, hun, when I was buying those because um, they sell out really quickly and I um, put all the ones I wanted in my basket, went to check out and they were all took out of my basket. And I had to go back and find more. But that's kind of fitting for you. <laughs> yeah, Becca like... asks me a lot if I'm okay. <laughs> it's a, probably the most common message, just, are you okay, hun? This smells I think it's um divine. This is what it looks like inside. It's all orange and no, it's not orange, yellow and pink. Is it like a body book? Does it say on? It is bath and shower whip. So you can use it as a shaving foam, um like soap, like shower gel or bubble bath. Oh if you're using it as shower gel I would recommend like putting a loofer in it and then it lathers on the loofer and then in. Can't find it on the Instagram, but it is um, like vanilla. Good call. <laughs> kind of have this running bath. thing where like all every every scent I have is vanilla. Salted caramel popcorn and vanilla bean ice cream. Now this one, which um, I it's suspect a is a candle. Oh, by the way, I'm not doing this just because you both you picked up that present. It's just I wanted to get a little bit of like you really <laughs> Just to clarify, <laughs> you're actually doing it for the ad. It's fine. <gasps> Smell it. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> so Becca's made me a candle. Like it's literally. Me and a candle. It's my YouTube banner. It's green. We have oh glitter that I've just thrown yes, everywhere. <laughs> and it's vanilla, jasmine, and sandalwood. Put my perfume bit in a candle. Yeah. Oh my god! I'm never gonna want to burn this, but also I really want to burn it all the time. Love it. So now we get onto this stack, which um I kind of don't want to ruin, but also I want to know what this is because. Girl, this is a lot. <laughs> these are, are these all hardbacks? They are, aren't they? Oh my god. Oh my god. Are these all the same theme? Oh my god. <laughs> I can't get it out. Okay, we're gonna do a... Ooh. <laughs> Which you know I wanted, but I wouldn't buy for myself. Oh, there's a bookmark. <laughs> oh, they're all from Book Depository. <laughs> and Book Depository, if you're watching this, your bookmarks are not as good as they used to be. They used to do like colouring ones and stuff, and now yeah. it's just an advert. Oh my god, it's so pretty. And also very fitting, because this is how I ended up in your life. True. So then I'm guessing that these two are the other ones. I have to just feel like completely not. It's mm. <laughs> fine. So oh. <laughs> That's book three in a different series. <laughs> a random one that you've never <laughs> I'm not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> book two. Oh my god, I love to cover. I don't know. I don't know how I managed to get that. <laughs> she fancy. I really like this wrapping paper. Thought you might. It's very celestial. It's gonna be that one that you can't rip though. Yeah, it is. I only buy fancy wrapping paper. I don't know what it is. I just really like wrapping paper. So I get them from WH Miss, but then you just can't get them. Is it gonna? Is it gonna? Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's impressive. Oh, God. I was really confused because I don't know how I managed to get a signed first edition of God's Grave, but not Dark Dawn when that's the new one. I don't know, but. That's so much pretty. I know. So shiny. Honestly, this is half the reason why I wanted them. Oh, they don't really match though. Like, Dark Dawn doesn't match the others. 
so more grey. Yeah. But also, I can't, I can't, I'm trying to hold them. <laughs> look how good these look, it's not focusing. Look at that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I need to, I need to squish. <laughs> Just like choking me. Like, right around the neck. It's fine. That was amazing. That was Christmas. <laughs> we are going to film Becca opening my gifts now, mm -hmm. but you'll have to go over to her channel for that. So I'll give you an update later. We we have a Gavin. I wanna I wanna move it. Oh. Oh what? no. What? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Just making it work. Hey girl. I mean I know you can't tell that it's Gavin. <laughs> We're trying to convince Gavin to read Akatar with us right now. Well, you won't. And he won't. So I think everybody should go over to Gavin's channel and tell him to read Akatar with us. Yeah, Akatar's a cozy little read fun book. Akatar starts in the snow and that will actually fit for the winter prompt because it starts in winter where she's trying to feed a family and she can't do it because there's no animals because it's, it's winter. The gusting wind blew thick flurries to sweep away my tracks, <laughs> but buried along with the many signs of potential quarry. <laughs> it's winter, read it. Everybody go over to Gavin's channel and tell him to read Akatar with us because we really want to reread it and we need Gavin right to read now. it. Yeah, like, like right now. Right, right the second. Not right now. Yes! <laughs> I know, right? We set them up for failure. We set them up so we can feel it. That is what it is. Some rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> Hi guys, so I did just do a very random update where we were talking with Gavin, but it's now Saturday evening. Wow. Well, it's like 2am, 1am. Yeah. We're so good at time. I know. Every time we vlog together, we just don't have a clue what time it is. <laughs> yes, yeah, so today we've just had a lazy day and I think both of us needed it to be fair mm. because we've just been a bit chaotic from December. Um, but... She got a new TV. <laughs> so, um, we watched The Lord of the Rings. Um, I I've realized, never seen it before. Yeah, she's never seen it. I have seen it but years ago, so I couldn't remember too much. So we realised how trashy it is, like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would have been as bad if I wasn't expecting it to be, like, Game of Thrones, but a film. Because um, it's like, the last Hobbit film is how I see all of Lord of the Rings. So then when you go back to the first one and it's like the first Harry Potter film and you're yeah. just like, wow. And I never watched it because when I was a kid, how old was I? It came out in 2001, so I was, wow. I was like eight. So I thought like nerdy things weren't cool and that kind of thing because I was a kid. And now that I really like high fantasy, I thought we should watch, well, I thought I wanted to watch it. I did want to watch it. Um, <laughs> and then... <laughs> Yeah, it's always been in my head that it's like this big epic fantasy like Game of Thrones but a movie. Mm. And it's not. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> it's really bad. And the TV that I've got, it's um, a 4K Ultra HD and everything looks a bit too real. So like we sampled the first episode of Carnival Row in 4K <laughs> and you can tell it's a set. Like, because there's so much definition. It's like Orlando Bloom is in front of me performing a play in front of cardboard. <laughs> This is too real. <laughs> it's, too, it's too much definition. It's like it's ruining a, everything. It's a very bizarre experience. Yeah. So yeah, that's been our day. Mm. <laughs> we watched the first episode of UK Drag Race. I've already mm -hmm. seen it, but I was making Becca watch it. I have watched Drag Race before, it's not, I didn't watch the UK one. And now, at 1am in the morning, we're going to have a reading sesh. Oh, we can't see mine. We're going to have a reading <laughs> sesh because we watched Booktube and that made us both want to read. Yeah. And we are also booktubers, so we should probably have some book content at some point. Mm. Oh, I just hit myself in the face with my Do you want to say what you're reading? I'm reading I Am Legend, which is the book that the film was based on. It's a classic. Just, I never know when to... You know how things are only antique when they're 100 years old? Mm. Does that apply for classics? Because no. the point of this is that it's like a sci-fi... Masterworks is like a sci-fi classic. But it's only 1954, which... That's the classic. I know, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that long ago. I know, it's classic. Is there like a time period? Because the Lolita and stuff that I'm reading now was read, was published in 1955. But I think the the, the Lolita edition I have is like vintage. It's not it's classic. It's modern classic. But then people say things like, 
Harry Potter is a modern classic. Like, what's the? How do you classify a classic from just it's an not older a time, book? It's not a time period. It's just like it has to have some literary merit to it. Who decides these things? Rich Whiteman. Makes sense. <laughs> classic sci-fi um and it's a dystopian and it's actually it's vampire have you seen iron legend no i don't know there's vampires it's not in um in the movie it's more like zombies but in the book it's vampires but they don't behave like normal vampires and it's like a vampire virus that's turned everybody into vampires but they they don't behave like there's elements of traditional vampires like they don't like garlic Mm. but it's like this man's turned his house into a stronghold because it's an apocalyptic setting and he's got like slats where that he can see outside and at night time they come and like the women try and lure him out by like lifting up the dresses and stuff. But it is nineteen fifty four, so it has that kind of like Reminds me of um male gaze kind of aspect to it, but Reminds me of The Day of the Triffids. Not for the same reason, but that is also like a sci fi classic that's quite short. And that one is like plants have become independent and can move around, but they've like got stingers oh. and shoot everyone. Essentially, it starts with this guy in hospital and most of the population turns blind. And the world is not made for blind people, so everyone, like, most of the population just dies. Because, like, they can't find food. there's nobody to fall. help them yeah. if everyone's blind. The few people that are left obviously band together and whatnot. There's a house that's turned into a stronghold mm-hmm. and they've just, like, got a massive gate around because all these plants still are trying to get to them. Wow. It's pretty awful. I'm finding like... this difficult to read in parts, actually, because he is literally on his own. There's nobody else. And it's just the despair... Yeah. And he'll like sl- he'll start going crazy mm-hmm. and he's like got a little bit of a dependency on alcohol and he's just mm-hmm. he's trying to find the cure but he also has to go through this monotonous routine of like restringing the garlic every few days because it loses its potency mm-hmm. and fixing any broken slats and stuff. Yeah. And he has this like vendetta like he has to go out every day mm-hmm. and kill as many as possible because they're all kind of like sleep in houses. Mm-hmm. But he's trying to find the cure and there's like flashbacks of his family because his family's all dead. Mm. of like when the virus was starting out and it's really interesting I didn't think I'd be that into it but it's written in quite an accessible way for a classic because mm. I know I've written like I've, I've written I, I wrote 1984 by George Orwell <laughs> I'm George Orwell surprise um, story time <laughs> I read that and the writing in that is a lot more overworked than it is in this so I was expecting mm. that kind of tone but it's a very accessible like easy to read every single time you've mentioned that one I've thought of Day of the Triffids because again it's like just pretty easy to read mm. And that would be like a modern classic because it's Frago that publishes them, I think. I might read that then. So I want to read more classic sci fi and fantasy, but um, it's hard to know where to start. Do you have any recommendations? Comment. Oh, yeah. I'll shoot classic, them over. Classic sci fi. I find that sci fi is like that as well on spacey sci fi's. Like it's almost apocalyptic sci fi. I love sci-fi. stuff like this. Like I'm really logically minded, which is why I like um, sci fi mm. because it's rooted in reality. Mm. But then if it's too close to the bone, like environmental apocalypses. Apocalypses? Apocalypse I. Apocalypses. <laughs> Apocalypses. Um, <laughs> like an environmental apocalypse is too close to the bone. Like I was sent a book from an independent author actually that's about after Brexit and this and Scotland mm. breaks away like from the oh no. <laughs> <laughs> After after Scotland breaks away from the UK and then we start, I think it was there, we start going to war and stuff and that's a little bit too close to the bone right now yeah. for us to be able to read. But this, um, it was written in 1954 and it's set in 1976, so. It's already been and gone. The vampires are apparently gone because I'm here and I'm not a vampire. Are you not? Jade as well. She is. <laughs> we have a conspiracy theory that Jade from Jade Ray Reads is a vampire. She's got long fangs. She's got fangs, like she's, she has the mouth shape for a vampire. Yeah. Oh, she's gonna watch so this, she's gonna be looking in the mirror like... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna send everyone over to Jay's channel now and see if you can confirm. Mm. Go, everyone go tell Jay that she's a vampire. Yeah. And she'll be really confused. Especially if she's not seen this yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's telling Jay she's a vampire and she's gonna lie. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> but um, yeah, we are gonna go and read. Mm-hmm. Bye. <laughs>
gonna try Bailey's for the first time. There's only a little bit in here because we're gonna see if I like it before pouring me it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Taste test at 2 a.m. Oh god, I'm time lapsing. Never mind. <laughs> Are you okay, hon? Am I okay, hon? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, taste test. But I know I don't drink much alcohol, so this is, um... Whew. My thing so far is it smells like paint. Yeah. Mm. Okay, it's like spicy ice cream. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Spicy <laughs> <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> it's like spicy ice cream. The cup of all. <laughs> Oops. This is our 2am. There goes half a bottle of um, Bailey's. Reading sessions get wild. Hi guys, so as you can see I'm back home now. I had a fab weekend with Becca, it was very chilled. We both very much needed it. I... I have come home... to this. I am so surprised. I was in the car with my dad because he picked me up from the train station and he said oh you've got a whole stack of parcels waiting for you and I just went what? <laughs> I haven't ordered any of these I know what one of them is and I won't be opening it because I'm saving it for Christmas and that is this bigger one because this one is from the Netherlands which means it's from my friend Brit over at Basically Brit so I'm going to be saving this one until Christmas because I do like to save the ones for my friends and whatnot but when it comes to surprise parcels I can't wait so um, I'm going to open the rest of them. I do also actually have a reading update, which I'm glad for because I feel like this vlog has just been me opening things. Sorry about that. But also, if you like hauls, then it's probably great. So I'm going to start with this one because it's the one I'm most confused about. Like the other three that I have are from Amazon, so Amazon wishlist things. This one isn't. Like this has something round in it and it's also handwritten and it doesn't have my surname on it which means it's not something I've ordered and just forgotten about as far as I can tell but I don't know who has my address like I'm genuinely so confused by this existence that I need to open it right now so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it <laughs> the one thing about doing stuff like this is that I'm always paranoid that I've just ordered something and forgotten about it because that's defo going to happen at some point but I'm fairly sure oh it's cute hang on Okay, this makes more sense now. Okay, right. So, I remember now. <laughs> I remember what this is. So, basically, somebody who helped run an app called Novelik actually contacted me and said that they quite enjoyed my channel and they wanted to send me a bookish hamper for Christmas. And I looked into the app so that it was bookish, so that it looked quite interesting. And I was quite intrigued, so I said that they could and this is, this is it, okay. This makes more sense now. So there is a card inside. It has this really cool print on it. Like, I love this. And on the back it just says, wishing you cozy nights and wintry reads. Happy holidays, Novelik. So that's really lovely. In this, there's a couple of bookmarks and they have the same artwork on. The artwork is by phoebekirk.co.uk. So on the back it just says Novelik. And then, as I said, the artwork from before. That's upside down. It's on there. So then, what else do we have in here? So there's this like, tiny Santa pouch. There we go. So a tiny pouch. Um, that didn't work. <laughs> are these socks? They feel like socks. I think these are socks. Yes, these are Christmas socks. Look how cute they are. Oh, and they're green, which is my favorite color. That's always exciting. There's also, is this a candle? It's a candle. <laughs> Ooh, that smells like lavender, but like not a overpowering lavender. Oh, Oscar's just laid on my, <laughs> he just laid on the stand. So this is Merry and Bright, which is made by Novelik as well, I believe, because that's the only logo that's on this. I do love my candles. I usually use Becca's. I have one behind me that I'm going to burn in a bit. Always happy to add to the candle collection because it's just one of those things that Oscar, stop it! Yeah, I just see candles as one of those things that like instantly makes an evening nicer because if you just get a nice scent every so often, like you're literally just breathing in something nice. It's, I, I don't know, I just really appreciate candles. So this is, this is very exciting. Sorry, ever since I got into ASMR, I just tap everything with my nails, which is probably really annoying. Yes, thank you, Novelik. I, 
didn't think this would turn up so quickly and it was great. I'll leave a link to the information for the app and everything down in the description box. So then moving on to the Amazon parcels. <sighs> so I'm just going to start from the top and work my way down. Oscar's just playing with all the rubbish on the floor. <laughs> I'm trying to cover the... because it says the book on the bottom so I'm trying to cover it up so I don't read it. This one says, hi Ashley, here's an early Christmas gift for you. Hope you like it. Lots of love. Mary from With Cinnamon, please. Thank you, Mary. Oh my god. This is exciting. I love Mary. She's adorable. And I will, of course, I'll leave a link to everybody's channels who has channels down in the description box. But I do love Mary's channel. She's just, she's the sweetest. And the book that she's got me. Oh, it's a classic. It's a Greek classic. Oh my god. Okay, so this is... Oh, I, I can never say this name. It's Lysistrata, another place? Lys Lysistrata? I, <laughs> I, I haven't read the story, so I haven't looked up how to pronounce the name because it's ancient Greek names. <laughs> I actually don't know anything about this. I just wanted it because I do want to build up my collection of ancient Greek plays and things. Although I have just seen the sentence on the back, a band of women and a lone peasant respectively defeat the political establishment. It says it's a darker comedy. I already find Greek plays hilarious because they just, they just throw insults about and anything can happen. It's brilliant. So if it's meant to be a comedy, I think I'm going to really enjoy this one and women going against the establishment okay thank you so much mary for this can't wait to add it to my collection so excited <laughs> i'm going to go for the long one next i this is like solid solidly this long so there's either i don't know if there's two or if it's just a really large book <laughs> let's find out <laughs> okay it's just a really large book this one says, a little something for you because it's Christmas. I hope you'll enjoy it. Books Michelle. Oh my god. Thank you, Michelle. And the book is... Dun dun dun. Ooh, it's shiny. So this one is Knight's Daughter by Marion Zimmer Bradley. I had actually just discovered this one because I want to read Marion Zimmer Bradley, but the book that she's most famous for is The Miss of Avalon, and that's about a thousand pages long. So I'm not quite ready to dive into that one. So I looked into if she had any other books, and this one came up. And I just thought it sounded so interesting because this one is kind of like mythology but specifically celestial I think it is. But on the back this one says, Since time immemorial, the kingdoms of sun and of night have been at war. Pamina, daughter of the Star Queen, who is the supreme symbol of the night, and of Sarosto, king of the royal house of the sun, must now choose which of her parents' ways she will follow. Together with her love, Prince Tamina, she must face the ordeals of the court of wisdom, of earth and air, and of fire and water. Only if she and Tamino pass all these trials can they have a life together. Ooh. It was the fact that she is the daughter of Sun and of Night and then has to go through all these trials. That instantly just sold me because I love a good trial story. It does sound so mythical even though it's not a direct retelling of sorts. And it's also really thin actually. I mean this is a much larger paperback than usual but yeah I'm, I'm really intrigued actually and I really am... So interested in trying Marion Zimmer Bradley's writing style because I don't know whether this was published before or after The Mist of Avalon, but I feel like it would be a good way for me to see if I think I will like it before throwing myself into a thousand page long book. <laughs> so thank you so much for this, Michelle. I love it. I love it already. <laughs> and then the final parcel. This one's really light. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Okay, this one says Merry Christmas to you, have a fabulous festive season, it may be full of books and food from Jade. So I'm guessing this is Jade from Jade Ray Reads, I will message her and see if that is correct. <laughs> and the book that she has gotten me is Dreamer's Pool by Juliette Marillier. Oh, Juliette Marillier. So, I discovered Juliette Marillier this year and I've read The Daughter of the Forest. I think I read that back in May. I absolutely loved it. I do have the, well I have two more books in that series. It's kind of like, I think it's a seven book series or a six book series and it's split into like two different arcs of sorts. But I have the first three. Haven't yet continued it but I do want to. But I've kind of been eyeing up this one as well. I mean, 
If that doesn't scream classic fantasy, I don't know what does. But Juliette Murillo is one of those fantasy authors that I just want to make my way through her entire backlog. She has so many books out and she's still publishing books now. But this is one that I'd be particularly interested in because this is part of the Blackthorn and Grimm series, I guess. And I will just read out what it says on the back. So this says, In order to escape death, embittered healer Blackthorn promises to forego a vengeance against the man who destroyed her life and to assist anyone who asks for her help. Accompanied by a former prison mate, a silent hull cover man named Grimm, she finds a home in Dalriada. Dalriada? On the fringe of a mysterious forest. Oran, the prince of Dalriada, <laughs> I'm gonna have to google how to pronounce that, is in desperate need of such help. He believed his future bride, Lady Flodeus, was his destined true love, but the bride who arrives in Dalriada is nothing like the sensitive woman who won his heart with sweetly poetic correspondence. To save Oran from his disastrous nuptials, Blackthorn and Grimm will need courage, ingenuity, and more than a little magic. So Juliette Marillier's fantasy books tend to be stemmed in Irish folklore, which is one of the reasons why we started reading it for Mythtake. And I will admit, I'm very intrigued about this silent hulk of a man who was a former prison inmate. Obviously something's going to go on there because it made the synopsis. <laughs> I find it funny because Juliet Marillier's books are always like these mass market paperbacks. So I just feel like this is a true classic fantasy book because they're made completely differently. So thank you so, so much Jade for this. Oh, I've been wanting to try more Juliet Marillier, even though I haven't continued with the ones I've got yet. But I do want to collect her books and make my slow way through them, I think. I really want to read this like right now. I can't. I I mean, I'm in a bit of a reading slump. Not entirely, but I'm reading very, very slowly. So I'm kind of just putting off anything that I'm excited for in case it affects that. But hopefully this one will be read in early 2020. It sounds so good. So thank you everybody who sent me something. Mind blown every single time. I basically came home to Christmas. It was amazing. But I'm not quite finished because when I went to Becca's over the weekend I actually forgot to mention that she also got me Lifelike by Jay Kristoff because she has filmed and uploaded a video where she was trying to see how many books she could buy with £15 because she goes secondhand book shopping a lot and so she filmed a come book shopping with me video where she goes and sees how many books she can buy secondhand for £15 and she saw this one and she does a thing where if she sees a book that one of her friends might like she picks it up. So she saw this one, she knows that I've gotten into J. Kristoff lately, I love the Nevernight series, currently rereading Illuminae which is by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman and I'm also interested in his Storm Dancer series, is that what it's called? So she saw this one, she already has it but she picked it up on my behalf and I'm very very grateful for that so thank you Becca. I don't know too much about it but I'm intrigued just because it's J. Kristoff. But on the back it says it's just another day on the scrap. Lose the last of your credits at the war dome, dodge the gangs and religious fanatics, discover you can destroy electronics with your mind, stumble upon the deadliest robot ever built. When Eve finds the ruins of an android boy named Ezekiel in the scrap pile she calls home, her entire world comes crashing down. With her best friend and her robotic sidekick in tow, she and Ezekiel will trek across deserts of irradiated glass, battle cyborg assassins and scour abandoned mega cities to save the one she loves and learn the dark secrets of her past. So I... I do like reading sci-fi but I still find it very daunting because I haven't read too much of it. So I find like technical sci-fi very daunting. So that synopsis is somewhat daunting to me but I have faith that it's not going to be too bad because it is J. Kristoff and I am currently reading Illumina which is very technical but it's not a problem. I also find it funny because there's a quote from Lady Taylor on the back and it says, hey you, yes you, put this grimy, beautiful, devastating, hilarious, screaming, writhing, all out post-apocalyptic girl buddy road warrior lost princess techno thriller in your face and read it right now. <laughs> which is, um, it's quite something. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Rebecca, for getting me this one. You very much expanded my J. Kristoff collection this weekend, which I'm pretty sure is your life goal. Yeah, my collection of J. Kristoff books has expanded substantially over the past month because I now have all of the Illuminae files, this one, Nevernight and God's Grave in the UK paperbacks, and then the full set in the US hardbacks. So, um, this is great. <laughs> Speaking of Illuminae though, on the train home I managed to get halfway through this, so I'm on page 300. I always underestimate how long this book is because this doesn't look too big, but it's 600 pages long. I have gotten to the part where everything goes to hell. So it's really interesting because now I have more of the multimedia like elements of it. Someone looked at me really strangely on the train because there's one page where, let me try and find it. So there's this page where they're writing, like you have to turn the book around to read it. 
And I was doing that on the train and someone sat next to me was just like, but that's the sort of thing I love. It's so interesting to have something that you have to interact with to be able to take it in. And it just adds another element to the reading experience because there's a perspective that's an artificial intelligence called Aiden, but it's also evolving past that. How do you represent that voice? So I feel like because it's technology and it's done through the formatting, it's just much more believable than if he was just writing. I was actually quite sad because my train journey ended just as like, a big problem happened. So I'm very eager to jump back into this. It was quite a slow start for me, but I'm so invested in this now. I can see why I loved it so much the first time round. It's really, really quick paced as well because there's countdowns, so you kind of just keep reading because it gets more and more intense the further you go. There's drama on every single level, whether that be relationships. There's also this like really, I don't know what the word would be. There's some really striking moments where, for instance, there was a page that was just, snippets of last messages sent to family members or friends. So all these people had sent messages knowing that they were going to die and it was just snippets from all these different conversations and that is really striking to me and it really builds the intensity of it because I feel like it's something like that that really gets your emotions in a book like this where emotions might be somewhat detached because you're not taking in like the normal level of detail. So I would read stuff like that and just generally feel a little bit empty for a moment because I'm like, oh wow, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> when it comes to reading though, I, I have been saying, I don't know whether I'm in a reading slump or if I'm just, I don't know. That December TBR that I filmed, just throw it out the window, launch it out. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I will of course read some of the books, like I still need to read The Song Rising because I'm doing a live show for it and stuff like that. I generally don't think I will have time to read unless I'm journeying somewhere, which I'm doing quite a lot of because at the end of next week I'll be going to Leicester and then to London and then the following week after I'll be going back to Becker's and things like that. So I do have a few journeys, but in terms of everyday reading, I just don't think I'm going to be doing it because I have so much content to make. I still got essays to write, I will be working. So I am working Christmas, I'll be working Christmas Eve and Boxing Day and things like that. I don't really have a break and I also have a plan to I haven't announced this anywhere yet, but I will be doing 10 days of videos at the start of January because there's so many end of month, end of year, start of a new year content videos that I want to get out there and this was inspired by Becca. Everything I do is inspired by Becca apparently. There's so many ideas and things that I want to put out in the world that I'm just going to do like a solid 10 day of videos. But that combined with things like a Christmas book haul and whatnot, it means I've got a hell of a lot of content to make, which I'm excited for because I've it's like one of the only things that I've been enjoying lately, but most of my evenings will go towards making content now, whether that be filming, editing, processing, any of that kind of thing. That's what I'll be spending my evenings doing, so I just don't think I'm going to end up reading all that much in December. And also just because I don't feel like it, I am doing essays, I have a hell of a lot to do. I'm not wanting to come home and read, I kind of just want to sit and stare at a wall. <laughs> Don't think my reading vlogs are going to be quite so reading heavy, although next week I will finish Illuminae, so at least there's going to be that for now. I don't know, come next week I might have got my reading mojo back, we will see, but for now, I'm halfway through Illuminae, I'm gonna take that. <laughs> but that is at the end of this video, so hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing that.